oh cool you can kind of see me probably a little shaky but so am i as a human leg day headed back to iron house strength and conditioning to my favorite little local meathead gym i'll call it the mecca of middle tennessee i'll say not usually very excited to do legs however every machine under the sun is at this place so it makes it kind of exciting my camera might drop but also how about this i'll hold you just imagine that i'm I'm holding you. They got all these machines, and so I think the you know the uh, vision I get is I'm gonna get this huge leg pump and really have fun with it. And I think another piece of it is that I'm bringing you along with me. If I don't have the camera on my leg day, then I'm probably not gonna try as hard, to be honest. Because um, I used to play football, and once a week they'd make a squat heavy, and everybody walked into the facility like life was just unfair because we're very strong, and you have to put 500 pounds on your back that day, and you're not in the mood. Yeah, it just feels like you got to go to war and get to a different sickening place in your brain that you really don't want to but you know you have to and it's coming so you walk in and you're just ugh. I don't have to do that anymore so it's really like the only leg days I know are balls to the wall go till you fail you know 500 plus pounds on your back screaming pure adrenaline and I don't have to do that anymore and so I'm not but then it kind of feels like well if I'm not going to be going crazy hard on my leg workouts then they're not going to necessarily grow I'll just do it for functional purposes and that'll do enough to maintain muscle mass anyways I'm going on a rant I'm going to do a leg day today and bring you along with me I hope it's a super fun time and uh let's go get pumped and show you around this gym a little bit I'm hoping there's not gonna be a lot of people here because old people at gyms get upset if they see a tripod and they don't wanna be on camera and you know th they think that they're not on camera at all times anyways in this world. But I'll let them live in their fantasy world and try to keep them off camera. Let's go get after it. I haven't probably eaten enough today. I've had about 1200 calories and it is 1237, but I'm bulking right now, needing roughly at at least 4,500 calories just to maintain weight. I'm a little underfed, so we'll have to go a little more psycho mode in the brain. Dig deep and pull something out of you if the glycogen isn't there. I am almost there. I had something else to say that felt mildly important, and nothing that I've said so far has reached above that, so it's important in the overall context. I'm just leaving Nashville at a meeting with uh, some people, my wife and I are kind of working harder on getting our production company up and running and we're gonna start a little more in the online space. I'll keep y'all tuned and um, you know, when we get our podcast launched, we're doing like a docu-series as well. We've already shot an episode of a really cool guest. So excited to share some of that uh, and down the line, get into the TV and film development and production and then kids books and toys. Toys is where my imagination started, collecting action figures and Ninja Turtles and setting up scenarios and situations. I got a great passion for that. We'll find a way, get an IP in culture and sell the toys and merch and do all that. Let's have fun. All right, peace all. Pulling up. Here's what I'm thinking, either lying leg press or I think it's the elephant par it's called, or the cambered bar where it's kind of over your shoulder and you can hold on right here, uh, squats. And I probably do it as a box squat. I gotta do that to kind of save my knees and just be safe as I'm getting older and I beat them up in football. And then I'm thinking a barbell RDL, Bulgarian split squat of some sort, you know, quad extensions, hamstring curls. I'd love to start the whole day with a backwards walk weighted with a sled, but that is dependent on how crowded it is in here today. It's always hard to tell by the parking lot because they're, it's just industrial buildings with a bunch of different businesses. So we'll see. And um, I think the best part about leg day, at least that I look forward to is being done with it. And I've got 40 ish minutes to bang this out. So I kind of like being under the gun. I have to be home by a certain time because I got a sitter and I got nothing. You know, I got nothing else, nothing of importance, but I could talk to you for 40 minutes if you're into that kind of thing, because then I won't. All right, let's go work out. Here's a super fun five minute delay. See this pop top here? Uh, yeah, I picked that up and dropped it in my car and had to go clean it up. And then I went to grab my keys to buzz myself into the weight room again. And I saw, what's this orange gum doing? Oh yeah, remember that meeting I told you about I had in Nashville? Well, I realized I was chewing gum, which I realized from watching Joaquin Phoenix on the Letterman show years ago, chewing gum and him saying something about it, that that's rude. So I felt like if I was gonna swallow that gum, I knew I was gonna choke. I didn't have enough saliva and it was weird. And so I discreetly, but not so discreetly, put it in my pocket. It's making the mental note that I'll definitely take this out and I just won't move around too much so it won't so it's been in there all day stuck to uh, all over um, so this is a nice nice little delay that I have here um, hopefully it's funny to somebody 
All right, so here's the lying leg press I was telling you about. Just did a few warm-up sets. Um, so they got, um, you know, I'll put my feet up here for some reps, get more of the posterior chain, put it down here, more of a quad focus, almost a sissy squat, and then it's got it right here with the slant. I don't know if you can see that for a calf raise. I imagine that's got to be what it's for. Um, I don't think you'd be doing a sissy squat with your your toes that far down below but just a little trick for gyms that don't have a calf raise that's one of the solutions you can go to a, a lot of leg presses and just put your feet on the bottom of it crank it out and then you save some time do it between sets there we go all right here, i'm gonna do my first hopefully working set i'm not really willing to put more than five cookies on here right now again i'm a little short on time here we go. come down here and do some with more of a quad focus. I don't go down crazy far on these though because the deep knee, uh, deep range of motion on the knee is uh, not good for all the injuries I've had. Keep that top end strong. Support the knee a little bit. Here we go, some calf raise. sit down I just got pretty lightheaded it happens sometimes where you're like I think I may pass out and if I'm at this high of a spot when I wake up I might be in a pool of blood or have a tooth or a uh, lip missing I always go worst case like my, my lip got caught on like this jagged edge here just ripped it all off now I'm just a top lip man for the rest of my life anyhow maybe I just need some more caffeine I'm on a runner today. I've had so much caffeine, it's too shameful to say. And I don't actually want to add it up because then that's got to face it. So, so let's do that. So a um, cup of coffee in the morning. I had one of those, um, oh man, what are they called? It's like those gamer ones. They got 200 milligrams of caffeine, the ghost ones. And then I had a full scoop of Isotori, which is 350 milligrams. So, uh, something else too so that's at least yeah that's at least a, a problem amount of caffeine probably seven 750 milligrams or so so I think if you overdo it even more screw it let's let's chase the dragon so I'm gonna go right back into another one not fully recovered but I'm also not going to failure on these so that doesn't matter and I don't want to do that much more and my time is fatiguing as well so um, let's do this I put a uh, six plates on each side now let's kind of pound this out a little bit this way you get a good uh, face and grundle shot of me hopefully you like it That's all I'm about. I'm all about this retention type based uh, videos, you know. So boom, grundle, boom, back up. I hope it didn't cover my grundle, this little black part here. Okay, I think we're clear, I think we're clear. Uh, I'm joking guys. I'm not doing that on purpose. I just have a really big grundle. You ever thought about uh, your grundle? Okay, this isn't an original shout out to my OG best friend, rest in peace, my brother, 
Devin Wiley, he said that the grundle is like the sewer of the body. <laughs> Everything just kind of funnels down to the sewer. And it's, that's hard to deny. Also a, a amazing analogy. He was full of those. Oh, that's what I like to remember. Something's off, boys and girls. Maybe like 2%. Um, my hearing is like a little off right now. It's like, it's like somebody's about to say fart but doesn't finish. I guess it's an F sound right here mostly. But again, I gotta keep moving. This is my other favorite, least favorite part, should I say, of leg days. Especially leg press. Because how is that on the side face? Is that a good retention point? Yeah. Um, you gotta unrack so many 45s. It's so easy on the front end to just hop under there and do it. It's also a weird lift because you, everyone can leg press so much more than they can squat. And I could have found a way to dig deep and gone to a different place mentally and gotten so many more reps. Probably, now, I'm not even going to say a number because it'll, it'll sound absurd, but that's what I don't like. It's like, man, harder to measure. Who really wants to throw 20 plates on a leg press? And then if you don't, who wants to do 50 reps at something? So glad I picked the leg press today and then destroyed it in your minds. Mbop right now is playing in this gym. It was like my first favorite song in band when I was in the third grade. And I, it remained such until I realized it was socially unacceptable to like them as your favorite band and sing it out loud in class. Okay. All right, I'm running up on the end of my time here. I got like 15 more minutes, so I'm gonna uh, take these ODLs and superset it with a Bulgarian split squat jump. I'll probably just do fives because I don't like doing the grip war thing without my reps. But that'll be enough to maintain, if not even build some muscle, even if I can do more because I haven't done these in so long. It'll stress the hamstrings. <laughs> going. <laughs> These are more just kind of rhythm jumps. I'm not trying to explode as hard as I can. It's just kind of that rhythm tempo jumps. Go into the force with a bent leg. Ten of them.
All right, I got another set of this superset, but I'm not gonna superset it with the Bulgarians on this set for a lot of, a lot of reasons, all valid. Uh, not much time, wanting to allocate the time of that towards quads, uh, some leg extensions, and also because I really don't want to do them. And that's probably the biggest one. Fighting my, my lungs more than anything else. Whew. So maybe I'll get more reps on this one since I'm saving some time. Huh? Still gonna be a grip war. Whew. Reps because my forearms. Well, making gains, silver lining, forearm strength gains. All right, here's another two birds, one stone. The uh, leg extension machines were being used, so I will come to the super cool lighting flexing room that they have, and I'll do some of those. Uh, what are they called again? Sissy squats here. Get some leg work. Ah, let me point this down a little bit. Yep. Time-saving combo. Go to the flexing room, get some cool lighting. I'll get some sissy squats in because the leg extension machines are in use. Oh, goodness. Oh, yeah, I'm cramping. Too much caffeine dehydrated. I haven't eaten enough. My head's getting cut off here. One more set, my alarm already went off. I'm gonna be late getting home to our nanny. All right, let's go. Peace. All right, very just overall super decent leg day. Super subpar, a little lower than average, but for me, I'm really happy with that because I, uh, I, don't, I don't hit the legs crazy hard anymore. Um, from a strength perspective, I don't want to wear my joints out that I have to use for the rest of my life for no reason. If I'm not playing ball or something, I can still jump out of the building. Yeah, I get a nice dynamic warm up in. I guarantee I could still hit maybe 35 plus on there. So I got power. Who needs the rest? You know what I mean? I want to grow those calves though. Don't want any chickens on the bottom because that's what shows in your shorts and stuff. Anyways, I'm done with that workout and I'm heading home now. I just figured, well, I got 24 minutes left on my memory card. So maybe let's just feel it having a chit chat, you know? Just letting the words dribble out of your mouth. I did have some pertinent things to maybe talk about, but I can't quite think of them right now. That song, Million, Million Dollar Baby's playing right now with Tommy Richmond. I think it's number one in the world right now. And I had the same feeling with this song that I had when Uptown Funk by Bruno Mars came out way back when. I legitimately had the thought of, this song is so good, and when it turns on, it just takes you over, makes you want to dance, and like, makes you feel, this one kind of makes you, uh, the up, not up done funk, but the million dollar baby kind of makes you feel tough for an unearned reason, you know, and you just like, get your endorphins going. So I, I had the same thought, man, this is going to be the number one song potentially forever. And now I know that's unrealistic, but that's how much I like it. The, the Tommy Richmond character, man, maybe, maybe he is a character. Maybe he's playing a character, an alter ego and busting out with that. Because I did hear that he was like an opera singer first. And maybe he, you know, he loves the music he loves and that's, that's what, 
what he turned into. But he's making great music. When I first heard the song, it lit me up. I was like, what is this, dude? It makes you want to bounce. And, and then the singer's great and the rapper's great. And then I found out it's the same dude hitting all of those notes way up here and coming down with it and having melodies going in and out of it really quickly and has so much power in each vocal. It's unreal. And it sounds like somebody that has put in their 10,000 hours who's been grinding in the dark for years. White boy out of Virginia and he comes and busts on the stage with a sound that's so new and so different yet kind of nostalgic. You feel like it's a 90s thing and yet it's something you haven't heard in this way ever before. And he has such a high pitch to him and yet it's tough and it's hard and it's never heard anything like it. All the props to him. I'm trying to think of like, so in the past, Eminem kind of busted on the scene like that. Like clearly this, this kid didn't come out of nowhere. He's been grinding, grinding, grinding and then came out with this million dollar baby and just slapped the world in the face. Eminem kind of did that with his sound and coming in all hot and aggressive and being kind of the first real mainstream white rapper to be a household name. Kid Rock kind of did that in his own way, just super intense and yelling and in your face and different kind of rap rock style. And this kid does that. For me, it's it's like, I love seeing that. Even if it's, uh, you know, the content or the genre isn't what I'm into, I love seeing somebody come out boldly with their sound and it's something the world never knew they needed until they heard it and that's what he did. It's motivating and inspiring because it's like, man, trust your gut, you know? Somebody had to trust their gut to do anything new and different. Just a cool deal. I hope it works out for him. I hope he keeps pumping them out. The next song up on his thing was De Devil is a Lie, which also is a really cool sound too. Baby, I really wanna run it now, chase me. The title of it though is uh, Devil is a Lie. Kind of true and kind of false. You know, the enemy, the Satan, I think he's very, he's very real. Just like God is very real. There is a spiritual war going on at all times. But devil, yeah, that's a word we made up. People made up. I don't, I don't think that's anywhere in the scripture. I think it's called Satan, the enemy. It's like a riddle of a title, you know what I mean? I don't know what he means. Is Satan not real or is just, is devil a made up word? Tasmanian devil, no, see it's real, okay? Tasmanian devils are real. Maybe he's talking about that. Really wanna run it out, um, I felt like I had some other pertinent, pertinent, potent information. Oh, that's another word my buddy used to use, Devin Wiley. He passed a handful of months ago. He used to always say potent in a really funny way. He was the funniest dude, could do all these funny voices and stuff. Come with it, Miles B. Uh, uh. I always hit a certain point in the day where it's like uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2 Secret of the Ooze. Not quite ripe yet. <laughs> Remember that? It's like they say women have like, what is it, like 10,000 words a day and men have like a couple thousand. And at the end of the day when the marriages are supposed to connect, it's like men spent all their words. I have the same thing for brain power, <laughs> mood power, positive thinking power sometimes, although I'm beating that one. I'm making it a habitual, uh, habit. I'm habiteering positive thinking because I have learned recently through this book that I'm going through called Learning to Tell Yourself the Truth. It's a workbook based on the book, Tell Yourself the Truth, Telling Yourself, whatever, William Backus. And uh, our feelings come from our thoughts. So we feel the way that we think and we think based off of the underlying beliefs that we have. So the root is the beliefs and there's, a, there's ways to change those. Um, and a lot of that can be through, you know, self-talk, telling yourself the truth, which this book is based on a lot of scripture. So telling myself the truth of God's word, because I believe that's the truth and that's what I'm banking my life on. Um, so I'll speak those things out, how they apply to me. It's giving me hope. I can already tell it's having a difference. It can make a very quick difference. If you're intentional about it, put some reminders on your phone, especially when I say it out loud, as opposed to just all right, just think more positively and I'm just in my head and then I'm very easily distractible. So I see something and now I forgot about that for four hours. If I start talking out loud, I have to consciously continue to choose to speak out loud. But the other benefit of that, besides staying on track and focused, is that you're hearing it. So faith comes from hearing and hearing the word of God and that's kind of the premise there. So even in anything, people can brainwash themselves if they want, but they have a better chance of doing that if they're not only thinking it, but speaking it, which, which forces them to not only think it, but also hear it. And then that is doing even extra programming on your subconscious. It's like all my best thinking happens on these country roads, headed home down these country roads, just engulfed in green, lush, bushy trees. And I love it.
I listened to so much John Denver Country Roads when I first moved here. That's me and my son, one of our favorite, one of our favorite songs. He would always say, Country Roads. And there was a couple different rendi- I'm rambling at this point. I got I hope you enjoyed the workout. I'll catch you on the flippity flop, homie. Huh,